Agriculture is a small but viable sector in the Bahamas. Although a significant amount of the country's food supply is imported, local agricultural production contributes to approximately 2.3% of the gross domestic product at an estimated value of $55 million. In an effort to improve agricultural products and to increase productivity, there is a move towards encouraging climate-smart agricultural practices within the local farming community through organizations such as the Bahamas Agriculture and Industrial Corporation, BAIC, and the Bahamas Agricultural and Marine Science Institute, as well as the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, IECA. Climate change, or global warming, refers to the rise in average surface temperatures on Earth. It occurs when carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are released into the air due primarily to human use of fossil fuels. The gases trap heat within the atmosphere, which can have a range of effects on the agricultural sector. These include heat stresses on plants, increases in temperature level, changes in soil moisture, loss of soil fertility through erosion of topsoil, reduced levels of water available for crop production, changes in the height of the water table, salinization of underground freshwater resources, frequent or intense extreme weather events, and loss of land through sea level rise. The principal goals of Climate Smart Agriculture are to improve food security and development through productivity, adaptation, and mitigation. Productivity refers to the ways to sustain production and increase income and sustainability without negatively impacting the environment. Adaptation involves reducing the producer's exposure to short-term risk while strengthening their resilience and allowing them to adapt to long-term stresses that are the result of climate change. Mitigation is solely concerned with reducing agriculture's contribution to the climate change problem. This mostly includes avoiding deforestation, reducing and completely removing any greenhouse gas emissions, and managing soils and trees in a way that maximizes their ability to absorb carbon dioxide from the air. Uh, my name is Kevin Nautilus. I work here at ARC, which stands for Aquaponics Research Center. Uh, here at ARC, what we do is greenhouse aquaponics farming. And what that entails is that you grow plants in a water-based environment versus the outside where plants are grown in soil. And in this type of operation, uh, you have plants that are grown in water and you have fish. And uh, waste product of the fish, whether it's their fecal matter or their breathing throughout their gills, it intoxicates the water, but that toxin is broken down by bacteria that colonizes the surface area within the water into nitrate, which is a form of nitrogen that the plants can use in order to grow and reproduce. So what you have is a symbiotic relationship between the plants and the fish. Some of the factors we consider in here is the water quality in terms of the pH, the nutrient levels and the temperature. So temperature is really important for us because you're looking at certain crops that grew at a certain temperature range. So we try to keep our water at a, within a certain temperature range on a pH range which allows for optimal growth and reproduction. In this type of operation we cannot use a lot of um, substances such as uh, fertilizers and a lot of uh, pesticides and fungicides that are usually used in conventional farming. So what this makes this type of operation is organic, it is safe, and has a less negative impact on the environment. The agricultural sector in the Bahamas has typically covered three types of farms. These include crop farms, livestock farms, and poultry farms. Historically, the country's leading crops are poultry, winter vegetables, and citrus fruits. There is over 245,000 acres of agricultural land in the Bahamas. It is owned, directed, and managed by the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources and the Ministry of Agriculture Act of 1993. Dennis Cates, livestock farmer from Cowpen Road and Golden Isles. I've been in the farming business all of my life. 
I do 75% livestock and 25% produce. I have goats, sheep, chickens, ducks, pigs, and an assorted amount of other birds for food production in the Bahamas, for sustainability. Also, I um, sell organic eggs, and I also sell goats and sheep and pig live and take them to the slaughterhouse for the customers. Hi, my name is Michael Wilson, Elodie's Farm. We are located in Malcolm Road area in the city. We raise uh, pigs and goats, um, some ducks, two or, two or three chickens for personal eggs. We usually sell at the farmer's market every Saturday morning. We do fresh mutton, mostly goat mutton, uh, sheep every now and again. When we don't have goats, we'll find a sheep from somebody. We also do the block and grill. We do uh, fresh, fresh pork, grilled pork, grilled mutton, grilled ribs. Farms in the Bahamas are becoming increasingly diverse and less traditional. They range from backyard farms to greenhouse facilities to much larger acreage operations with niche products that include microgreens, herbs, leafy greens, and agro-processed items. My name is Sidney Sinclair from Downtown Adventure Farm. We are here on Gladstone Road by the farmer's market. Now, if you take a look at all the vegetables, we, we grow them at the farm. And I'm able to consistently stay growing these things. Today, we brought out some of the little spices. Like, for example, here, we got, it's a lemon bay rum. We got the lemon grass. We have the garlic chives. We have the basil, the mint, and the rosemary. We have some of our jams that we actually produce at the farm because most of the times when we get the fruits, we'll actually produce the, the jams and the, the juices. Hi, I'm Emmy Robinson. I am proud owner of a backyard farm called Island Pana Greens. Um, I grow microgreens and sprouts. Microgreens are just a tiny version of the greens that you see in the food store. They are packed with more nutrients than a larger dose and they're pretty fairly simple and easy to grow. I just was given an opportunity to be able to grow from my back patio. I looked out one day and saw that it was just sitting here doing nothing. So I knew how to grow microgreens. So I decided to just set up, get some extra trays, get some shelving. It was fairly simple um, to set up. And if you have any spacing, just grow something uh, to sustain yourself, your family. It's more healthier. You know where your seeds are coming from. You know what you're putting into your soil, um, what you're feeding the plants. So this was a fairly simple way to be able to eat healthy. The concept of climate smart agriculture is important as climate change is having a major impact on the Bahamian agricultural sector, particularly as it relates to the livelihood of producers, as well as food production and food security. Among the top concerns of local producers, are pest and disease infestations, water quality and availability, changes in soil composition, soil erosion, loss of plant products, and loss of infrastructure. In addition to the rising intensity and frequency of hurricanes, there are periods of severe drought, while at other times there is an enormous amount of rain. Some farmers struggle to deal with the impact that has occurred to their property or livestock due to the numerous hurricanes in recent years. On October the 12th, 2016, I was devastated. It was truly a disaster. I found 36 goats and 24 sheep dead. I also found all the roof of all the buildings torn off by Hurricane Machu. I found my feeder house roof, all the tin gone. I also found a building in Gulf with water, all the feed that I had purchased previously before the hurricane to sustain the animals after the hurricane was also damaged. I had 
hundreds of ducks and chickens that were blown away. I had about 44 wiener pigs that was drowned in the pens because the roof was gone and the pens filled up with water and mud. This is something I never experienced before in my life. After Hurricane Matthew, we were totally devastated. Up to the day now, which is almost two years, we still haven't reached the back of the farm. Yes. My fence, all the fence was down, and what we had to do was pull it up and tie it up for the time being, and then try to get all these grains back in the ground so we were able to generate money to try to repair the, the, the farm back. Usually by the time hurricane comes around, there's not much growing. There are challenges when it does come to the weather. As soon as the weather changes in the summertime, um, the humidity starts to make them lie down in the tray and they're not as, I guess, spritey as they're used to, that they would be in the wintertime. During rainy season, that's the challenge I have. Um, I do get a lot of loss as they're not allowed to get a lot of um, heavy rain on them. That's why there's a covering. So um, for next, this season, I'm looking to probably put another heavier vinyl covering on it for the rain season and get a little bit more reinforced with the beams that are here. Meanwhile, others have managed to find ways to effectively navigate these environmental inconsistencies in order to control the safety of their produce. What we normally do is we remove the covering of the greenhouse on some of the covering on the side of the greenhouse, which allow the wind to just flow freely throughout the structure without impacting much of the physical structure itself. And also we, would, we can remove some of these plants if we could uh, harvest them and store them temporarily and strap down some of these structures. Anything that could fly or, or be picked up from the wind and become a missile, those structures are either removed from the greenhouse or just strapped down if they can. I had to put in some reinforcement with uh, some plywood to hold up the, what I have here is a vinyl covering for it before it was shade cloth. I had used that for quite some time, but unfortunately that does not do well in hurricane season. So during the hurricanes for my, for this year, I'm looking to completely take everything down and just let, allow the structure to, to remain to allow the weather, the breeze to blow through. Outside of releasing animals to fend for themselves during severe weather storms, livestock management practices encourage having suitable animal housing that has provisions for elevated, slatted pens in order to reduce the chance of animal drownings during floods. The slatted floors also help to improve animal hygiene as such floors allow feces and urine to pass through them and to then be collected for use as fertilizer. The use of shared houses such as low tunnel structures, high tunnel structures, two roof or single roof structures or greenhouse structures allows for large increases in yield, storing a significant amount of water, year-round production of seasonal produce, control over crop nutrition, and the overall improvement in the quality and consistency of crops. One of the key benefits of farming in the greenhouse versus outside is that you are sort of protected from the elements. So a lot of factors, environmental factors, you can almost control, such as humidity, uh, temperature. So as far as climate change and having uh, high temperatures, your production, your operation is sort of immune from a lot of those things. And plus, our operation has a minimal impact negatively on the environment. I had to, to, to revamp things and, and, and build the farm properly to be able to generate money to build the farm back. So what we had to do is, we put the irrigation through the whole entire farm, in which we have like 13 zones. For water, we pull the water from the duck pond and the fish pond, and that's what we use to actually water the plants. So it's, it's kind of like aquaponics as well. We built five greenhouses where we could actually grow all of our seedlings. And then we built our first growers. So during the summers, we'd be able to grow tomatoes. We'd be able to grow the, col the colored cauliflowers and, and broccoli and all the sweet peppers and whatnot. Our production time frame range from four to six weeks. In other words, our crops are ready for harvest at about four to six weeks from their seeding time, which is really short. As for feeding, small ruminants can be fed with local or invasive vegetation that is high on nutritional value. Farmers can also plant high quality forage on small areas of land. 
This forage can be collected and stored in silos to be used during severe storms and other weather challenges that could result in a shortage of quality animal feed. like to happen is that we could take out some type of risk insurance you know what I mean so it wouldn't be too hard trying to actually build a farm back recognizing that there is a need to bridge the gap in the country's estimated one billion dollar import bill the government in its effort to reduce the food bill has improved upon its previous strategy by creating BAMSI in the last five years BAMSI gives technical assistance through its associative farmers program. However, outside of government-directed initiatives, more support is needed from people like you. Support local farms, particularly those that use climate smart farming initiatives. Visit a farmer's market, buy locally grown produce, and meet from locally raised livestock. These acts of support enable farmers to afford to implement the necessary measures that are intrinsically part of the Climate Smart Agriculture. The fact is that without your support, many farmers will not be able to incorporate the much needed climate friendly initiatives and will inevitably fail. And if they fail, then we all fail. But with support, farms can thrive tremendously and do so in a manner that positively impacts our environment and our health.